Let's talk about the one thing that some authors agonize over the most, and that is how to title your book. If you are dealing with this particular pain, I've got just the plan for you, and that is called the C-Test. Hello and welcome everyone to Pen to Paper. I am so excited that you are here with me today because today we are talking about how to title your book. For some of you, this comes easily and naturally, and maybe you're starting on your manuscript right now and you have a title already set, good to go. But perhaps for others, this might be very, very anxiety driving in your life right now because you have this book you're writing and you know where your story is going, but you have no idea how to title it. And I understand how that could be very difficult because when I start my work, I always need a working title to go off of. Even if that working title isn't the final title in my project, but for me, that's something that I need. So you could go with a working title, start with that, but now you're at the point where you need a final title and my proven plan that has worked time and time again is called the C-Test. Before I get into the C-Test today, I want you to know that you need to be aware of your genre and how most titles in your genre are study them. Take a look at the other books in your genre, go to a bookstore if you need to, or a library, and just browse your genre's titles. And you're going to see um, a similar trait in the titles. And perhaps one or two may pop out that are quite different but you'll see how some genres just kind of stick to certain titles because that's what's proven to work. And of course, we talk about here about how you want your book to be able to compete in the marketplace, and one way is to do this with a title. Now, as I said, if you need a working title, it's okay if it's garbage, it's not gonna have to be the final title. So just stick with something for now, but now that you're ready, let's go to the C-test. I call it the C-test because, you know, if you need an idea, you need to go see the test. I know, it's a little bit, <laughs> it's, it's a little stretched, but you get the gist, right? I hope so. Let's start with C, and I'm going to start with contradictory, a title that is contradictory. Let me show you an example. Here I have one called Team of Rivals. And it's the political genius of Abraham Lincoln. Team of rivals. The two don't go together, team and rivals. But somehow, this book already, just the title itself, got me curious about how could you have a team of rivals? Am I reading this the wrong way? No, 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 it's good. <laughs> so... And also, you have this idea with this title that the author is out to prove a point, and you're curious to read to know more to see if the point is actually proven in this biography of Abraham Lincoln. So you could go with a title that is contradictory, and that will be a fascinating way to go about. Our next one is T for transformative. Now, I don't have my book here with me today, but one transformative title that is easy to understand is How to Win Friends and Influence People by Dale Carnegie. What this title does is it shows that there is a problem. Perhaps there's a problem in your life that you don't have friends or you have a hard time making friends and you feel that you would like to influence perhaps not every single decision that someone else makes, but you would like to have some sort of good influence in their life and you want to know how to go about that because you realize that you're lacking in these two things. So what does this title promise you? It promises you that you're gonna know how to get friends and you're gonna know how to influence people. It's 
to the point, but it's showing you that there's a solution and it's a very powerful, transformative solution. This kind of title tends to go really well with the nonfiction world, personal development books. You understand that because they want to transform you from one sphere of reality to another, one that is better for you. And so that is one type of title that works really well with that genre. The next letter in the C test is, let's see what I have here for that one, established. So a title that takes uh, another author, a subject that is well established, it's well known, it has a certain vibe or feeling with it. And for this one, I'm going to go with the Jane Austen Society. Now, Jane Austen, you automatically think a certain time period, a certain way of living, perhaps even a certain type of writing, something that is witty or comedic, dramatic. And so automatically, you kind of understand that this is what this type of book is. And sure enough, this book did deliver. And also, when you have an established following in the title, like Jane Austen, you already have a ready audience. So this works very well. I would say this, I mean, it's slightly historical fiction, not exactly old historical fiction, newer historical fiction. Um, it's kind of like a literary fiction work as well. So this does work well for those types of genres. There's also another book I have called Mr. Dickens and His Carol, and it's uh, kind of a retelling of how Charles Dickens came up with this carol. But again, you get the same idea that you have people who like Charles Dickens, boom, already got a ready audience wanting to read your book, and you realize that it has to do with this Christmas carol. So already you are invited into that spirit of it's winter, it's Christmas, you're going to find out how he comes up with his inspiration. And that is the established title. Now, for the next, the S in C test is a title that is straightforward. Take a look at the triangle. This book is set in the Bermuda Triangle. So he calls it the triangle. You kind of just know what you're going to get with a straightforward title. For many readers who don't want to kind of have to mess around like, oh, what is this book about? I just want to know by the title. Well, it is that straightforward. I also read another book recently called The Murder of Roger Ackroyd by Agatha Christie. Again, The Murder of Roger Ackroyd. Boom, done. <laughs> you already know what the book is about. So people who like murder are going to want to read that book. The Triangle. Now perhaps isn't this isn't as straightforward as The Murder of Roger Ackroyd, but it's still straightforward enough. You see a ship on the cover, the triangle, everybody knows about the Bermuda Triangle, so most probably the book is going to have to do with that. So already you're kind of giving a window into what the reader is expecting to read, and then when you deliver, that's really satisfying to the reader. So a straightforward title is a great way to go. Then we have the last T in test, which is the thematic title. And for this one, I'm gonna go with Redeeming Love by Francine Rivers. The thematic title tends to pull at the heartstrings and you'll see this a lot in historical fiction novels, romance novels. This one tends to be very, very popular. You could even see this in, um, I've even seen this in some fantasy novels as well, where you'll have the theme, re oop, not there, <laughs> redeeming, right? Having to do with redemption and love. That is very <laughs> straightforward in itself, but it kind of gives you the idea of what the theme is going to be in the book. And if, and if a reader is wanting to look into that, then most probably they'll pick up your title and you're already giving them a taste of what you're looking for. Uh, actually, that is what I did with my books here. I have Redeemed from the Ashes. I took 
the theme of redemption and I put it with kind of a physical representation of that, which was ashes. And that's my title. And actually that title I had from the beginning and it just stuck with me. Then I had wisps of gold here. Again, gold is my object. Wisps kind of has to do with the idea of these whispers of gold abounding and uh, rumors that my main character has to go through and try to understand. And so wisps kind of has that connotation of it's wispy, it's hard to get a hold of. And so that's why I decided this was actually my working title and I wasn't too sure for a little while, but I decided to stick with it because it really captured the theme and the idea of my book in general. So I gave you five, <laughs> five different powerful titles that give enough to the reader and, but yet still keep enough that they're willing to read your book. And a little bit of a spin-off from the thematic title is a title that's very lyrical or poetic kind of along those lines, you want to probably be careful of a very long title that probably puts off many readers. But again, you need to know your genre. You need to know what the books in your genre are titled overall, and then figure out from the C test what title you should go with and play around with it. Have fun. This is not needing to be a point of pressure. Um, you know, come up with maybe two or three different titles and then just throw them out at friends or family and they don't even have to be writers. They could just be readers and you share that with them and then either they say they love it or maybe they have an idea that they're more than happy to give to you for you to use in your title. So don't let this be, uh, a difficult decision that you have to make on your own, make sure that you include your community, your friends, your other writer buddies to help you make this decision. This is an important decision. It's a decision every prospective buyer looks at the title and sees and tries to understand how they feel from it and if the title is going to bring them further into the book and this is very important so i just wanted to give you a quick little test that i go through with all my titles it's called the c test and i hope it works for you if you enjoyed this video slash episode podcast youtube this is going everywhere um please share and subscribe either to the podcast or to my YouTube channel. And I'm looking forward to seeing you next week.